Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Talk of the Town. For those of you listening on the radio, you just heard my absolute favorite rendition of the Star Spangled Banner was performed in 1991 right here in Tampa, Florida by the amazing, the wonderful, the ever, you cannot compare, right. Whitney Houston. And that was also at the end, you heard the fighter jets go over from McDill's Air Force Base. So it was amazing. Um, you want to know something that a lot of people don't know? That was released as a single. Oh. Because it was so good, and the Gulf War had just begun, right. and 9-11 hadn't happened yet. And that she released that single, and she gave every amount of dollars of profit to uh, the 9-11 you know, wow. funds and a charity. Beautiful. So it's pretty amazing. <clears throat> she kidding. ranks above all time, and that voice, happy birthday, America, everybody. So I am here today on the talk of the town, and for those of you who know, um, I work for Consumer Energy Solutions, and I am lucky enough to work for the amazing Patrick Cloudin, who allows me to do a tremendous amount of good in the community and beyond. Sometimes that community might be Cartagena, Colombia, right. and <laughs> San Diego, California, or Washington, D.C. I just got back from a trip from Washington. And... The thing that I want to say is that Pat sponsors the show and Consumer Energy Solutions sponsors the show so that I can bring important things, good things, good people, and good events to the public. And so it's really a feel-good show. Today, I am bringing a new friend, uh, Tammy Martin. She's a Clearwater girl now. Uh, and recently just, my gosh, was that? Sunday? When do we be together? Friday. We did that Friday. We did that Friday. On Friday, Tammy did a, an amazing thing. I'm just going to go over it quickly because it's very important for everyone to know the big, beautiful heart this woman has and, and also how we can help and do things that maybe we haven't thought of. Tammy brought a Make-A-Wish uh, activity here to Clearwater, to the fire department on Station 45. Hats off to everyone yeah, at Station 45. Clearwater Fire and Rescue, amazing, amazing place. Good, good guys. And this little boy named Eli, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to name too many names or anything. And his wonderful family, Natalie and his little sister Ava and A.A. Ron, Aaron. And they came all the way from Kentucky. And this little boy has been fighting and defeating all the odds. Uh, he has something called SMA, which is spinal muscular atrophy. I never had heard of it until meeting him. Uh, and his mom told us the story of how he has gotten gene replacement. He's doing this amazing, amazing, amazing well. He speaks so well. Very well. And I was told that kids generally with what he has Correct. have terrible speech. Right. But here's the thing. I was driving the car. I was the chauffeur. That was my volunteer job for the day. And that little boy, who's three, Correct. was sitting in the back. And I could understand, without seeing him speak, I could understand everything he was saying. So not only is he speaking as a three-year-old, but he's speaking as a three-year-old with this debilitating disease, and he's able to talk so beautifully. And that is because of the love and right. the devotion, right. I'm not going to get teared up, right. of a mom who cares and would not take no for an Correct. answer. And she found the best doctors, and she, you know, is, is on you know, certain medicines that the FDA is looking to approve. Right. And she's being watched, and this little boy are being watched because they have defied all the odds. All the so, odds. you know, uh, Tammy brought it to me. Me got my boss to let me take the day off and just take our car. And we spent the day at Clearwater Fire and Rescue. By the way, this was all over the news. So if you <laughs> tuned into one of the six uh, <laughs> news guys that yes. were there, um, they followed us all day long. And then we went to Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And anyway, and I got to meet this and fall in love with this family. So my message to everyone today on this amazing uh, celebration of America and all that makes America. America wonderful, which is America has big hearts. Correct. And we always take things on and we take right. responsibility for our neighbors. And there is no hating of this wonderful country in my area. So there you go. Happy Independence Day, everybody. Do something good. So now Tammy. Tammy yes. is here to tell us about another amazing thing she does. If you think I'm all over the place, I am learning that this beautiful woman is like 
everywhere like air. She's helping in so many things. But I want to talk about this one particular thing she's working on today, which is about a very important documentary. It is called Foster Shock. For those on Facebook, you can see this flyer. I'm showing it. Um, she's going to be doing an event with bringing this documentary to everybody. So Tammy, what First of all, welcome. Thank you. I know you. it was a long Thank introduction, you. but I figured I had to cover all the good things Thank that you, I know Lynn. about you. You're very welcome. So tell me what this Foster Shock documentary is about. Thank you. Okay, so Foster Shock is a documentary highlighting the ills of the state of Florida foster care system and how it was actually implemented and put in place. So by doing that, it actually puts at risk these foster care children to drugs, criminalization, human trafficking. Um, and so the system that's supposed to help them, and I'm assuming Correct. keep them away from all those Correct. things, is somehow contributing. Correct. And how that all fell into place was in 1996, they did an experiment with five group homes that they wanted to privatize. So foster group homes. Correct. Okay. Holding like even up to maybe 50 kids in a central location. Okay. I mean, they're large group homes. Okay. So when they did that, um, four of those test pilots failed. So they spent $27 million between five test pilots and four of them failed. Well, in 99, when Governor Bush was elected, it was his priority to push through and privatize the foster care system in the state of Florida. Despite the fact that Despite, four of the five yes, failed. Okay. Correct. Just want to make sure I'm tracking. Yeah. So when that happened, um, 18 community-based centers were open throughout the state of Florida, where everybody thought throughout each county was going to be housed under an umbrella so that if a child needed services, that particular community base would handle all that. Okay. Well, what they in turn did is open that up to over 200 subcontractors. Oh, how the heck do you control so that? So how do you control it, right? It's like, okay, so now I mean, I'm not a mathematician, right? but I'm already going like 50 kids in a home. A, right. That doesn't make it any doesn't sense. It doesn't make any sense. No. Well, it's not working, and it's proven. Data has proven it does not work. Um, my concern is I want to be a catalyst, and... I need to get to the foster yeah. shock. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, so, so now yeah. we know what the point of the right, documentary right. is. So that's for sure. The documentary Foster Shock was actually written by a guardian ad litem. And for you, th for those of you that don't know what a guardian ad litem is, it's an advocate for a child in the foster care system that actually goes to court and is the child's voice. Okay. Okay. I met a beautiful one in Miami the other day. Beautiful. Been doing it for a long time. And beautiful. I finally... We're, Timing being everything, right. I, I actually found out what a guardian ad litem was right. just a week ago. So. Right. So it's volunteer. So what happens is when a child doesn't have a guardian ad litem, knowing the way it's privatized the system, the child gets lost into the system. I've seen they that. might have um, their caregiver here, their doctor over here, they're going to change a school, but the only consistent in that child's life is a guardian ad litem. Which is a volunteer. Correct. So you're throwing bazillions at a system, but yet without the piece of the guardian ad litem, which is a volunteer, Correct. the whole thing crumbles. Correct. Okay. There's nobody to watch over that child. Okay. So that's my concern. Okay. Um, when they turn 18 and they leave the system, without them ever having a mentor in their life or a guardian ad litem, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? 3% go to college. Three. Three. Three percent. Okay. There's no trade. So a lot of them get either in trouble and they get jail time or human trafficking, which is huge in the foster care system. And I'm not, I mean, you can go online, you can look up the data. They prey on these group homes. They wait across the street. They know where these group homes are, Lynn, and they prey upon them. Wow. So and here's so here's something and why we even have this show. People couldn't possibly know about this. Because no. I I'm pretty out there right. and I am always an advocate for children. Right. I had no idea to even think of that as a right. puzzle piece to this right. life. So that's what the Foster Shock documentary is um, shows 
and it actually has five children that have gone out of the system that are now adults. And they even take you back to their group homes where they grew up in the state of Florida. And they tell you all the stories that took place in these homes. So you take them from a home where they've been abused or neglected. They go to a group home where they're supposed to be protected, but they're still being abused, drugged. Psychotropic medications is huge in the foster care system. Well, based on what you were just saying, how, how it's run, right. I would think that would be an immediate uh, right. dumping those drugs on right. them because there's, there's nonstop money from the government. Correct. So what happens is, again, without those guardian ad litems, to sit there and advocate and look, it takes hours to go through their, their files. They might be seeing a doctor here. They get moved to another location. Um, then they get moved somewhere else. I, I have personally seen where they've been over-medicated mm. or same medications, and mm. pharmacies are filling these medications. Oh, my and gosh. You look so at they're not even go, trying to doctor is, shop, but they're, they're getting it from... They're get, right. So oh my gosh. if there's nobody watching over, um, the child, you know, is lethargic, doesn't want to go to school. And then the group home thinks, well, you know, why don't they want to go to school? There's problems. They don't want, they don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. Ship them out to another group home. Um, if they start acting up on these medications... They grab them by the wrist, okay, you're not welcome here anymore. Let's call and get them moved to another location. It's nothing. Musical uh, chairs. Musical chairs. Musical chairs. And they can, they can go through 22 foster homes, group homes. Oh, my gosh. It's nothing for them and to no be one, moved. And wait a minute. So, so you could get yourself through 22 homes and no one is, like, seeing, like, there's not something that pops up, like, on a, on a computer Lynn. screen and goes, like, warning, warning. Warning. Seriously, something wrong right. here. So a, a lot of people don't watch the news. But the money keeps coming the money each keeps time coming. they move. Well, here's the thing, Lynn. Um, in the state of Florida, because it's privatized, mm -hmm. people started opening these group homes. Okay. Well, why would they? They're opening them for a profit. Right. So the state pays them 150 to $180 per day per child. So do the math. You have oh 30 gosh. children in a group home. Hundred and fifty to one hundred and eighty dollars a day. You have CEOs making five hundred thousand dollars right here in Pinellas County. Oh my gosh! I, but I've, the child does not. And I'm not saying all group homes are like that. I've been into a few not. that well, I've been very happy with. This, the whole point of this is the shock word. Correct. So we know that there are plenty of people. No one is is you know blackballing everyone. Correct. But. But to watch the documentary Correct. is going to get you to be able to see, I would think, indicators Correct. so that you could tell if something is going wrong. Absolutely. And, of course, like we're always trying to do, get the system to evolve and change, Correct. not be stale dated in some idealistic thing they thought it would do, but it is not in turn actually Correct. doing that. So Hillsborough County right now, for instance, has to the end of this week. They might lose their funding through the community care base. Because um, um, children have actually been sleeping in case managers' cars at the Wawa in Hillsborough County. Sleeping in cars and sleeping at the offices. And the reason being? Well, they call these kids damaged, which bothers me. They're not damaged. They need mentors. Mm -hmm. They need somebody to love them. Mm -hmm. And I really push for people opening their homes to be foster parents. It's sad to say, but people don't want the older children. Mm -hmm. They don't want to foster them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take that chance. They mm -hmm. hear all these scenarios. So we should be helping a person with a heart or a desire to help so that they have the skill set because there are different times in life. Correct. Some people never had children. Some people, children are grown, and maybe they're looking at doing something big and helpful. Right. And so if we provide skill sets and things to the these people that have an inkling or a desire to do it. Correct. Now that sounds like a bean Correct. investment. Correct. Correct. So that's what I'd love to see. So they're in these caseworkers' cars. I'm, I'm stuck yeah. with that picture. I'm well, sorry. Well, and so, and then that is because the caseworker doesn't know what to do, but in their heart, they're just, they're not going to put the kid on the street. Right. They can't. They can't. So, so they're I mean, really group bringing homes. their work home with Correct. them. Well, God they bless are. them. And, and that's another problem. You know, they might have 30, 35 kids on a caseload. How can they advocate and do their work properly and make sure every child's been taken care of if they have that many case no, load? No. All right. Well, we're, we need to put a plug in to, for people to look into how to become a guardian ad litem. That's yes. for sure. Yes. Because that sounds like that's the way you could really take responsibility and really do 
amazingly good Correct. with yeah. your skill set and with your heart, and, and you can kind of control Correct. that more. So, and you know, people always ask me, Lynn, um, I, right now my youngest is two months, and my oldest one is 22. 20. You're a guardian ad litem. Yes. Okay, I didn't get that. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. So that's yes. okay. Yes. Because I'm like, she doesn't have yes. a two-month-old baby. Have been, <laughs> yeah, have been for three years, and it's just my, my passion. Um, they kind of require 10 hours minimum. Okay. Um, I probably do 20 a week. Um, I just it's I just have to advocate. I can't stop. I'm sure um, you're good at it. Wow. I, I, thank you. You know, to go in front of a judge and to know you're making a difference with that child, and the judge really listens to the guardian ad litem because they're there constant. Sure. You know, they're the sure. ones that know. Um, that's the human being, the is. heart that's actually showing up, keep Correct. showing up with the, the with nothing to profit from it, just the Correct. sheer love and intention to raise a, a smart or healthy Correct. child. So it's 30 hours of training, okay? Um, minimum 10 hours a month they require, okay, to kind of just make sure the child's in the system and everything's in place. They're school, they don't need help with schooling mm -hmm. or their doctor appointments. So you're pretty much on top of everything. Um, but it's 30 hours of training. And actually, Pinellas County is 961 volunteers short. I was ready to clap going, and that's a good number, and then I went, no, we're that there's short. There's 2,200 children right now in Pinellas County foster care system. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I'm sure there are people listening, and I'm sure once we put this video out and we promote the documentary, there are going to be more people that go, it sounds like something I could do, and mm -hmm. sounds like something I'd like to do. Right. So where do they get the real skinny on the Guardian Ad Litem ship? Like, is there a website? So they can actually, I can give you a contact number, and there mm -hmm. is a website, and the first thing they ask you to do is just kind of go to uh, like a little informational. Makes sense. And sure. then see if that's You'll something you You'll know right you away if it's a fit. Correct. Right. And mm -hmm. then you would sign up and you do the 30 hours. And then you get um, the judge approves it. And then you just. This is, and, and, this is and beautiful. And I have to say it's I did heart, not know about this. It's heart aching because my very first timeline, they gave me a binder. And I'm not exaggerating. It was this big. Okay. And it had children. And they're like, which one would you like? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So I closed the book, <sighs> and I said, put me where you need me. Wow. What's the top of your caseload to the guardian at litem that is so far behind with the, with the system where I can get in and make a huge impact immediately? Oh, and that's, that's I went off the ground my very first time with four children. Oh, my God. Hitting the ground. Sweet, sweet, Ooh, wonderful. And wouldn't wonderful. change it. But they can go, actually, they can go to the website. It's... HeroAchild.org. HeroAchild.org. Or they can call the Guardian Ad Litem Office in Pinellas County. Pinellas County Guardian Ad Litem Office. 464. 464. 6528. 464. 6528. That is the Guardian Ad Litem Office in Pinellas County. If you have a little bit of love or a desire to help kids, wow, what a way you can, can do that. So I hope we. We get some, and some statistics going there. And please come out Thursday. Oh, yeah. So this is, Thursday. Yeah. Come see the documentary, please. Thursday, July 12th at the Way to Happiness Center at 33 North Fort Harrison Avenue. This documentary was written by a guardian ad litem and directed by her. Um, it's amazing. It's 45 minutes. Um, it starts at 7.30. Come out at 7. We're going to have snacks out there. Um, but come on out. We'll have flyers, too, for the Guardian at Lightem. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. So Great. And the, the Way to Happiness Foundation of Tampa Bay has a Facebook page, and also uh, they have a website. And they are available. You can actually go on the page. We're going to have the information there. So if you need a, a place to just, like, reach out and see it real quick, um, that'll be at the Way to Happiness Tampa Bay on Facebook, and you can call there too to make sure that uh, you have the time and everything. That's 727 467 6961. And that's an organization that is putting on this event. So you go, like, okay, well, the way to happiness, I thought they only had this little book, but if we're safeguarding and improving our environment, if we're loving and helping children, then this event is is being held in the right place. Right. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome. Thank so you. So I want to ask you one more, we have one more minute. Um, 
when you watch this Foster Shock documentary, I don't want to leave everyone with a, maybe such a negative thing, but I want to get them to understand some little tidbit that they're going to see.